wow what a game what a win uh what a way to go into the bye week sitting at six and three uh it's funny during the stream uh we were talking about how just reflecting back on this first half of the season so far and thinking about a lot of the what ifs uh the what could have been what we feel should have been uh but also what didn't happen uh and the ravens when you think about it, and I know it could be a little painful to think about it sometimes, but Ravens could be 9-0 and right now. Um, but then when you think about it, too, just like they 6-3, and three, Ravens could easily be 3-6. and six. Uh, A lot of their games have been so close. Uh, they just come down just to a couple of little things here and there. Uh, but the fact that with the things that the Ravens need to improve on, they sitting at six and three, heading into the bye, and their schedule is what their schedule is for the remainder of it. That's 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 pretty good, especially for how this season started, how it had been going. Ravens have won three games in a row, three games in a row. Like this was a team that they couldn't even win two games in a row for a while, but they have now won three games back to back to back. But anyway, YouTube team, keep it clean. Seeing Graven here with another video, and in this video, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that a lot of us, we watch together. I know there's a lot of y'all out there in New Orleans repping heavy, man. Heavy. I done seen so many stories, so many posts um, of Ravens fans out in New Orleans just having a good time. Like, straight up. And I, I love seeing stuff like that. So, shout out to any of y'all that got to actually go there to the game. I know y'all were going crazy. I know y'all had a lot of fun, so I'm, I'm happy for y'all that y'all got to experience that because uh, it is nothing like it. It is nothing like it. Um, and now Ravens, they're off for the next 13 days, the next two weeks. Uh, the Ravens do not have a game because they have their bye week, and this was a good time to go into the bye week, I think. Uh, I know somebody in the stream had brought out, they were like, man, I, just, I wish that the Ravens didn't have a bye week this week because I want to see them carry the momentum. And I get that, but at the same time, I was like, nah, I'm, I'm glad they got this bye week. They need that time off uh, because they can get healthier. Um, they can just get refreshed, rejuvenated for this long stretch uh, of the second half of the season. Because there ain't no more bye weeks after this. Well, unless you get that first round bye. But right now, you're not scheduled to have any more bye weeks after this. So you, you want to get as right as you possibly can. You want to get healthy. Um, now, this game, the big trade acquisition, uh, Roquan Smith, that boy, he, he made his presence felt from jump. I said, I feel like maybe it may take like a quarter or a quarter and a half. Or no, from jump, that boy was all over, man, all over. And he, um, the way he was making tackles in the hole, he was blitzing like crazy. And he, in this game, him and Patrick Queen, they were blitzing powerfully. Like, even if they didn't get there, they made their presence felt uh, when they shot through them gaps, man. Um, Roquan Smith, it, it, this was everything that people thought that it would be for Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen. Everybody said it, that they felt like Patrick, I mean, excuse me, Roquan Smith would allow Patrick Queen to be more free, more flexible. And that's exactly uh, what we saw. That's exactly what we saw. Um, the middle of the field was covered a lot of times a lot better. Um, I didn't really see the, the linebackers get really giving up anything. I didn't and let me know if I was wrong, but I didn't see the middle of the field getting exposed like a lot of times, like, like we've seen it and whatnot. But man, it was just beautiful to see Roquan Smith from jump, man. He let it be known like, Hey, I'm, I'm here and I got y'all. And he just, he elevated the play of the entire defense. He elevated the whole defense. It was just a beautiful thing to see. Um, and again, like I said, Patrick Queen, he was flying around. I think um, I think he, he probably would have, I think he could have had a, a chance to try to intercept it if he would have turned around. It actually could have been a pass interference on Patrick Queen too. It was on a pass that um, Patrick Queen was covering Alvin Kamara and Andy Dalton threw it to him. Uh, and Patrick Queen kind of broke it up. He did get there pretty early, but anyway. Um, so good stuff for Roquan Smith, uh, good stuff for Patrick Queen. Um, I, again, I, I don't think Patrick Queen, well, he's not going to be here for the long haul. 
Um, I, I think like I, I would love if the Ravens kept him at least for next year. I, I, they're not going to pick up his fifth year option, but I would love if they kept him at least for next year. But you know, with with Eric DaCosta, um, if he don't plan on re-signing you. Uh, a lot of times he'll get stuff done early rather than later. So that's another reason why I, I don't expect Patrick Queen to be here. I would love for him to stay. Like to have him, Roquan Smith, and Patrick Queen together, that would be a lovely thing. That would be a lovely thing. I, I would love it, but I just don't see it happening because of the business, baby. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but we'll, we'll enjoy them as long as they are together. Um, where else do we start? Uh, the defensive line. Um, the pass rush. Well, defensive line, the, the run, they early on, they were stopping that run like crazy. And I think really overall, they were stopping the run. I don't know Avon Kamara, he got his, he got a little bit like here and there, but nothing crazy. So overall, the defense did a really good job uh, stopping the run, um, not letting the Saints just have, not letting the Saints have that option. Uh, and then the pass rush. The pass rush, it was there tonight, man. It was there. Marlon Humphrey, of course, he got his sack. Shout out to Kyle Hamilton, the pass rusher, because he, he helped out on that play. Um, but Justin Houston, don't make no sense, man. Don't make no sense how great he's been playing. What do you, he, he's only played six games and he got seven sacks. Three straight games with double-digit sacks. It's nasty, man. It's nasty. Straight nasty. And the one sack, oh, I felt bad for Andy Dalton on it, uh, where Justin Houston got the first half of it, then Calais Campbell came in and whacked him. It, it, was, it was just nasty. I, I was saying they, they, need to get, they need to get Andy Dalton off the field on that one. Um, the defense in this game, for the most part, they were holding it down, especially on the clutch downs on the third down. There were, of course, the, the couple of drives where the defense, oh, yeah, Justin Houston, he got the, uh, the interception too. Shout out to Brent Urban. Brent Urban, he knocked the pass. Uh, and I think there was a couple of batted passes down by defensive linemen. There was another one by Calais Campbell early on in the game. Uh, but Brent Urban tipped it up. And Justin Houston, he caught the pick. So he, he had an, an amazing game, man. Straight up, an amazing game. Um, Kyle Hamilton had a pick, too. But they called this bogus pass interference on Chuck Clark. It was such a bad call. It was such a terrible call. It's like, man, y'all really took Kyle Hamilton pick away. But Kyle Hamilton was doing a good job open field tackling uh, in the game. So that was really nice to see. You see his confidence just continuing to get built up. He's been looking better and better. So he's starting to really uh, turn that corner. Uh, Marlon Humphrey. Mm. I say in this game, it, it, it was up and down. I think more ups than downs. But Chris Olave was working. I mean, Chris Olave was working the, the whole Ravens, their secondary. Um, he was working Marlon Humphrey some. He was working Marcus Peters. Uh, but they uh, they did a lot of bending, but well, they did break on that one goofy play. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, Marlon Humphrey, overall, this was a solid game from him. Marcus Peters. Ah, uh, it it was up and down. Uh, it was up and down. Um, I was worried. There was a drive early on in the game where it was looking like Peters Peters was like. Because it happens with Peters a lot of times when if a, if the game's not going his way, then it's not, not necessarily he'd check out, but it seems like he can uh, just get so mentally frustrated and then that frustration can, it can show with his play. Um, so there was one part early in the game where I forgot exactly what happened, but then there, it was another play where they, uh, Andy Dalton tried to attack Peters and Peters covered it well. Um, it was a play intended for Chris Olave. I forgot what happened in the previous play, but it was early on in the game. I think in the first quarter. Um, but Peters in this game, of course, we uh, it's like with cornerbacks. I think Richard Sherman talked about it in his podcast before with how cornerbacks, their job is so tough because they could be playing good all game. They could be playing lockdown all game. Then they just they give up that one play. Then everybody just remembers that one play and they're like, oh, man, that quarterback, that cornerback had a bad game. But um, it's a little different with Marcus Peters in this game because he wasn't having the best game uh today but that the play to the tight end oh man that was just it was embarrassing there was just such a lack of effort um because Marcus Peters he gave up a lack of effort the tight end kept running and Chuck Clark just sitting there pointing at him and I'm thinking like man like really like you just pointing 
And no, the tight end did not step out of bounds. It was a tiny bit of green in between his foot and the sideline. It was close, but he did not step out. So that was a good no call, I guess. Um, but that that effort on that play was just just embarrassing, man. Um, from Marcus Peters and Chuck Clark, uh, yeah, I, I just it, it it was crazy to watch, man. It was crazy to watch, but I'm I'm just glad that that didn't change the outcome uh, of the game uh, because that was the only touchdown that they gave up. Like the score could have looked so much prettier had they just. Push him out of bounds. That's, that's, just push him out of bounds. That's it. Just push him out of bounds. Because Marcus Peters was close. But then with Chuck Clark, he could have just confirmed that the tight end was out of bounds. And I know, again, with football, things happen super fast. So it's so easy for us that we're sitting here on our couches and whatnot. We're watching the game. Oh, he should have done this. He should have done that. He should have done that. It's easy for us to do that. Um, so with the players, it's, things are happening so fast. Super fast. So maybe Chuck Clark may, might have thought that he went out of bounds. And that's why Chuck Clark was just like, oh, no, he was out just pointing, da-da-da. He probably thought the, the whistle was going to blow. But um, I'm, I'm just glad that that didn't change the the outcome uh, of the game. Uh, so I think that's uh, that's everybody for defense. Ain't it? Geno Stone, he was quiet tonight. I, I thought he was going to get tested a lot more. I thought Andy Dahl was going to take a lot more shots, but he really didn't. He really didn't. Um. So, yeah, that's defense. Special teams, uh, Devin DuVernay, he was the punt returner. Had some fair catches and whatnot. Uh, at kick return, I think he was out there, but most of them were. I know Justice Hill had one kick return, but most of the, the kicks were uh, touchbacks. Um, Justin Tucker, thank you. We love you as always, of course. Made his field goals. I mean, what's new? Shout out to him. Um, but, yeah, so special teams, nothing crazy. Uh Jordan Stout, he had a really good punt that with the Ravens. It, it, it took a really good Ravens roll, um, but that was that. Um, John Harbaugh, let me say before I forget, the, the, there was a challenge where the Ravens were on defense and uh, they sacked. I think Justin Houston sacked Andy Dalton. And live, I thought it was a fumble. I think Calais Campbell ended up recovering, but they showed the replay and Andy Dalton, he had his little three-finger grip on that ball. To where he fell down, he hit the ground, and then the ball came out. So he was down. Uh, but the Ravens, they end up challenging it. It was a bad challenge. Um, but, I mean, thank goodness it didn't change the outcome of the game. Because uh, that was uh, getting, a little, getting a little scary at that point. Um, and then there was a, a part with the play clock. I think the play clock was running, running down or something. And Harbaugh called a timeout. Lamar was looking at him like, oh, how'd you call that timeout, Harbaugh? Uh, but then the next play... The next play, they had got a nice little chunk of yards, and they, they, they got a big first down on it. I forgot exactly what play they ran, but anyway, um, and I guess that, that can lead us to coaching, I guess. Uh, Mike McDonald, great job. Great job tonight. I mean, with the defense, like really, <laughs> you, you, you ain't got no reason not to call a great game because you got a lot of players over there. So you got, like, no reason. Tyus Bowser, he came back. Uh, Tyus Bowser, I think it was on the first drive. With Ty, it was, if it wasn't on the first drive, it was on the second drive. Where Tyus Bowser came blitzing and uh, he provided pressure. Andy Dalton was off on the throw. It was a beautiful thing to see. It's like, oh, nice. Welcome back, Bowser. Welcome back. Um, but yeah, with Mike McDonald, I feel like his job is like not easy, but it's like not easy, but it's like, uh, like yeah, you got a lot over there. You got a lot to work with with defense. So, um, but he he called a good game. Uh, there were some times like when the Ravens were up, like right before the second half, and, and they backed the corners and safety, backed the secondary way up. And I know that can be kind of tricky sometimes because it's like, ah, oh, you don't want them to really play prevent defense. But at the same time, if they're playing up close, you don't want them to get uh, caught slipping and, and the ball goes over their heads. So it, I, I know it's tricky, but it's all about situational football. And it ended, ended up working out. Um, they did some bending, not too much bending, but they did some bending, but they didn't break well. They they broke on that that one play, uh, the Marcus Peters and Chuck Clark play. But besides that, it, they did pretty good overall. Besides that play, um, Greg Roman. This was a uh, this was a, a good game from Greg Roman. Um, the situational play calling, uh, for the most part, um, it was pretty good. I know uh, there was one drive in 
the third or fourth quarter where Ravens were up multiple scores and they just threw, threw, threw. Um, they did three throw in place. Um, and then a lot of us was wondering, like, hey, what's what's going on with the run game? Like, the run game been working. Like, why why not continue? You're up. Da, da, da. But then the, the next driving for the rest of the game, they they got back to it. So I guess G-Roll was like, oh, you know what? Let me try something. Um, then the, the only other questionable thing was when the Ravens were up at the end of the game and they still had Lamar running the ball. Now, I wonder, though, too, if because, you know, Lamar, he could change some stuff at the line, too. I wonder if that was him calling his own number as well. So I, it, it might not have even been uh, Greg Roman calling for Lamar to run. It could have been Lamar calling for Lamar to run. Um, but now switching to Lamar, switching to the offense. Uh, the game started off started off uh, nice, um, especially that, that touchdown throw. It was just – it was beautiful to see it because it was the same kind of play they ran last week against the Bucks. Uh, where Lamar is looking like he's going to keep it. It's looking like he's going to run. Well, actually, it wasn't the same play because the play last week against the Bucks, it looked like it was an option play. It looked like he was going to pitch it to King and Drake. But on this play, it looked like Lamar was going to keep it. So, yeah, it was a different play. Uh, but then at the last second, he sees likely throws to him. Perfect touchdown. It's beautiful to see. Now, um, everything wasn't so pretty uh, from Lamar. There, were, there was a couple of throws that he missed. Um, there was one, I think that was on the third down, where it was to Demarcus Robinson. He threw behind him. There was another one uh, where it was intended for Josh Oliver. He threw it behind him. Um, there was another one where he uh, he missed Isaiah Likely because Likely was one-on-one -on -one with, I think, a safety. Uh, he overthrew him by a little bit, um, and I think that was it. Uh, but though, those... Those are missed opportunities, man. Those are missed opportunities. And I, we talked about it during the stream, like with the Ravens. The thing that we've seen with them this year, uh, it seems like they they can be their own biggest, their, their, their own worst enemy. Um, because the, it's the self-inflicted stuff that hurts them the most. It's not even necessarily what other teams are doing or anything like that. And, and they, that ain't no disrespect to other teams, obviously. But it's the, the self-inflicted wounds, man. Self-inflicted stuff. So, Lamar, he, he got to hit those throws, man. And they, were, they weren't even like crazy deep throws or anything like that. They were just little intermediate stuff. Um, he was on the run for some of them. Oh, well, yeah. For the likely overthrow, he wasn't on the run for that one. But for the DeMarcus and the Josh Oliver, I think he was on the run on those because he had got pressure. Um, but those, those are throws he got to hit, man. Because those are missed miss opportunities, missed yards, man. Um, and then there were two drops from Likely. One of them was on an RPO. Lamar faked uh, the handoff to, I think it was to Drake. Then he threw the uh, Isaiah Likely in the flats. And Likely, he just dropped it. And then there was another throw where Lamar got pressure. And Lamar got the throw off, got the ball to him, got it to Likely, and then he dropped it by the sidelines. Um, so, yeah, again, just... And that, that one was on the third down. But, again, it's just missed opportunities, man. Ray, Ravens, again, they, they are their biggest, their own worst enemy sometimes. Uh, a lot of times, actually. Um, there was the uh, – but, again, these are things that um, Ravens, they can fix. Like, it's – with Ravens, it's like fixing a lot of the small stuff. It's like fixing a lot of the small stuff, and that can make significant uh, big positive changes moving forward. So the bye week is coming at a good time for them to just take time off. Go relax. Go just chill. Take time off from football. Um, take a little vacation or whatever. Uh, take a nice little break because they all could, could certainly use it because it's a grind, man. It's a long season. It goes by super fast. Uh, for us, but for them, it's like it's almost nonstop, man. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that was Lamar. Uh, often, oh, with him and Ronnie Stanley, um, I loved it. I loved it uh, because Lamar was frustrated. I think he was frustrated that the they didn't get the snap off. Uh, Ronnie Stanley, he they was going back and forth with each other, but that I, I know somebody had recorded it. The back and forth, it didn't stop. Like, because Lamar was chirping at him, Ronnie was chirping back at him. 
it didn't stop right there on the field. They continued on the sideline, but it they it just shows that they care about the game. They continue to talk to each other. They they obviously they they talked it out because uh, somebody recorded them on the sideline just talking with each other, and it happens. It happens if you if you really care about somebody, um, it, then you can be straight up with them and let them know whatever it is that you got to let them know. And sometimes the conversation ain't gonna always be so calm. Uh, and right there, they obviously football players they're in the heat of the moment, uh, so the conversation is gonna be a, a little bit animated as it was, but. They continued to talk. It, ain't, it wasn't like, all right, Lamar said what he said to Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie Stanley said what he said to Lamar. And they were like, hmm, I'm not talking to you anymore. No. They continued to talk, continued to have a dialogue. And they, they squashed. Well, not squashed it because it wasn't an issue with them two. But they got through it. And that was that. Um, so shout out to them. The offensive line this game. Uh, I guess that's a little segue to the offensive line. Run blocking. Good job. Very good job overall. Um, pass blocking. They had a few hiccups here and there, but they, they did a good job overall. Um, Drake. I felt for Drake because he um, he he was close to hitting his 100 yards, but then toward the end of the game, the Ravens did a, a pitch play. And I was like, Ugh, why, are they, why are they getting cute now? Just run the ball. But, and that, that messed his yardage up because he ended up getting 24 carries for 93 yards. Averaging three point nine yards a carry. That 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 pitch play messed up his average, but he did get uh, his two touchdowns, which was nice to see. Shout out to Jersey Drake, man. Um, he has been a good addition. He er, early on when he first came aboard, it was like, ooh, okay. I mean, <laughs> but as the season has gone along, he's gotten better and better, and more and more comfortable. Um, Justice Hill, let's see his carries. He had a uh, four for eleven, so nothing crazy. Um, Lamar had eleven for eighty-two. Uh, had some big runs, definitely. Uh, Mike Davis, Mike Davis. Uh, whenever he's on the field, you know it, they Ravens don't run him at all anymore. They they don't. It's, whenever he's on the field, he's not gonna be uh, getting the ball handed off to him. Um, it's it's always a giveaway. Uh, I think that's why he's not on the field that much, but. He made a great play um, where Lamar faked it to, was it to Duvernay? Lamar faked it to somebody. Uh, Mike Davis, he had blocked. I forgot uh, which, which defensive lineman it was, but it was a defensive lineman. Not an outside linebacker, not a safety corner. No, it was a defensive lineman. Mike Davis blocked him, knocked him on his butt, then went out. Lamar got pressured, uh, but Lamar got the ball off, threw him a little... The, the little shots that you shoot at the office in the trash can where you, where you throw a payable ball like that. Lamar threw that to him, a little hook shot, and uh, Mike Davis caught it. So that, that was a nice play by him. Um, nice, nice little heads-up play. Uh, and, yeah, uh, wide receivers, Prochet. Uh, Prochet, I think he had two catches. It looked like he was going to start getting busy early on, but no. Let, let me just look at the numbers exactly. Yeah, he, okay, he just had two catches. Isaiah Likely, I thought he was going to be a little more active than that. Um, well, he did have two drops, though. Uh, so, but um, he had his one catch for the touchdown, and that was it. Um, Josh Oliver, he had a really, really nice catch uh, and got a nice little chunk of yak, too. Um, Should have had another catch, but Lamar threw it behind him. Um, oh, yeah, Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson had a nice catch, contested catch, too. Um and then there was another play where Morgan Moses, he said, I'm tired of playing right tackle. I want to turn into a D end, and I want to play for the Saints. Just give me, just give me one play. Give me one shot. Uh, Lamar snapped it. Uh, he got some pressure. Morgan Moses strip sack Lamar. Morgan Moses, yes, we said it right. Morgan Moses strip sack Lamar. Uh, so it was a fumble. And then Lamar picked it up. Um, and again, Lamar... It just always takes me back to the Giants game. Every time Lamar makes another play like this and he escapes a play like this, it always reminds me of the Giants game. And it just reminds me. And, and we said it after that Giants game. Lamar has continued to make so many of these plays over the years. That's why he tried it in the Giants game. So this time, um, he picks up the ball uh, and then throws a great ball to, uh, to Deshaun Jackson. But 27 for the Saints, he played it perfectly. It, it was just great, a great defensive play by him. Um, so that was an incompletion, but that play could have gone south. It could have been really ugly. Could have been a recovered fumble by the Saints. 
uh, a big loss by the Ravens, but Lamar, he saved the play. Um, but Deshaun Jackson, hey, he, he couldn't even last the whole game. His hamstring started hurting. He went out with a hamstring injury. So that was that. Uh, Demarcus Robinson, he had, oh, he had a catch. He had one catch for 12 yards. Mm, I don't even remember exactly when it was. Um, Justice Hill, he had a catch. Yeah, I remember that one. I thought it was initially, initially I thought it was Duvernay that made that catch. Paracard had one catch, and Devin Duvernay, he had one catch. Now, Devin Duvernay, I was very surprised that Devin Duvernay was not used like crazy. But again, this was my fear for Devin Duvernay, that one game he gets used like crazy, and then the next game he doesn't. So my, one of my big fears came true. I'm glad the Ravens still won, but this is one of those things that, uh, and I know every, every play ain't going to go off every game, but I just really thought that he was going to get more opportunity uh, to go off. Um, but Ravens were still making stuff happen with the run game, uh, so that's a good thing. But, yeah, so that's that. That's everybody. Um, it was nice. Th th get that ball has been getting spread out a, a little more. Um, so – I would expect Mark Andrews to be back, Gus Edwards to be back after the bye. And let's just hope they continue spreading it out. Um, let's hope that they do that. So we, we won't know till we know. Um, so, so much. We'll, we'll see. Um, with the, the passes that Lamar missed, they, 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 they were inexcusable. Um, but I think something that would really help with that is just the, uh, the short passing game to just help your quarterback get into more of a rhythm. Um, I, I joked about it during the stream. I said, man, Lamar probably, he, he just uh, he just not used to all these receivers being on the field at one time. I said, he, he used to a bunch of tight ends being out there. So when he's like seeing all these receivers, he probably got so excited and like, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on here? But um, nah, he, he got to make those throws, though. But he'll, he'll be all right, man. Again, this bye week is, is coming at a good time uh, just for everybody. Um, so again, even though the bye week's here, we ain't going nowhere. We're still going to have videos every single day. Um, so y'all stay on the lookout for that. Um, but yeah, man, I appreciate y'all. I, I love y'all. This was a fun game. And again, Ravens are six and three. They, they in a good spot right now. Still got some stuff that they need to clean up. But the fact that they six and three with this stuff to clean up, that's, that's a good thing because they could have had a lot of stuff to clean up and been three and six. Um, so where they're sitting at is good. They could have been better, but they could have also been worse. But they are in a good spot uh, in the AFC and AFC North. They first in the division right now. In the AFC, I'm not sure exactly where they are, because uh, I I think the Bills are five and three. I want to say the Chiefs are six and two. I want to say I, I forget the other teams right because I, I got to check all that stuff. Um, but anyway, Ravens are in a good spot right now. So uh, let's just hope that the rest of the season goes great. And, I mean, we'll see when we get there. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. And we out.